Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Ricardo and I'm Bujo Busted. First of all, happy 2017 to all of my followers. I can't believe that it's 2017 already. I don't know where this year went. And I want to welcome to my channel all of my new followers. I don't know how this happened, but my channel has got more than 1,700 followers this morning and I'm really, really happy about that. Today I have quite a different uh, video. I've asked you a couple of days ago like a week ago or something, to ask me some questions here on YouTube and on Instagram, and today I'm going to answer those. I hope that this will work because I'm filming with my phone, so I'll be looking at my um, at all the questions on my laptop. Um, let's see what happens. Start with the questions I got on Instagram. So excited because I'm so close uh, to 4,000 followers, and it just mind-blowing. The very first question is, I know you're a student in Paris, but where do you come from originally? So I've got this question, I've, so I've got this question several times <laughs> on here and on YouTube as well. I come from Italy, I'm not Spanish, I'm not Portuguese or Latino, I'm from Italy. I come from Palermo, which is a city in Sicily, and I've been living in France for three years. So that's why you see um, some French in my bullet journal. The next question is, why bullet journal and not binder or any other type of planner organizer? So that's a very good question. As you may know, I've started bullet journaling one year ago, um, more than one year ago, on September 2015. And before that, I was just using a regular planner. Let me show it to you. Before that, I was using the small skin planner, like daily planner, and uh, you know, nothing fancy. I was writing down what I had to do on any specific day, and that was working fine for me, I, I would say, but um, when I came across the idea of bullet journaling, I knew that I would work perfectly for me, because uh, the problem with uh, regular planners like that is that um, you end up having a lot of blank pages and that was bothering me a lot because I don't like to waste paper so I would end up reusing the pages because I would feel like kind of guilty to leave them blank but at the same time it ended up being a real mess because you have like some appointments then you have some blank pages where you write stuff and then some other appointments so I wanted to have a system where if I wanted to skip a page or a date, I would do that, you know, and the work, the system would still work. Yeah, I like the flexibility of the system of bullet journaling. Third question is, what made you decide to use the bullet journal system in the first place? And have you learned anything about yourself from bullet journaling? So yes, I've decided to use the bullet journal system Last year, when I first watched Boho Berry, um, I guess it was her very first video, her flip through, and I still remember, um, like, I subscribed to her when she had, like, I don't know, 100 subscribers or something, and I was so amazed by her job and her journal that I decided immediately to, like, to buy a Leuchtturm 1917. Yeah, that was my very first. I started bullet journaling with a Leuchtturm 1917 A5 dog red journal. Just because I watched that video, I was like, oh my god, this journal is amazing. I'm gonna get one. So it was something like I watched the video and then like went on Amazon and bought one. And uh, yeah, that's how I started. The question is, have I learned anything about myself thanks to bullet journaling? Ooh, that's a... That's a good question, right? I have realized, thanks to bullet drawing, that I am a visual person, that colors help me a lot because I can visualize things. And uh, if I look at my older system, I don't know how I actually managed to go through it because I was not using colors, I was not using doodles. I've, yes, I've realized that I need that because it makes much more sense uh, to me to use colors. And uh, in general, I feel I'm much more productive and I'm much like happier with my system. Next question is, what do you do when you feel bored, uh, when you're studying, and uh, how not 
to be disturbed when um, by your phone while you're studying. It's too bad I can't show you because I'm filming with my phone, but I've been using uh, recently this app called Forest, which is absolutely amazing. Basically what you do is that you set a timer up and uh, if you reach the end of the timer, a smaller plant will grow in your garden. But if you if you go outside the, the app, if you go on Instagram, on, on other apps, that will immediately kill your plant. So this way it kind of forces you not to look at your phone and that's been working so, so well for me. If you're using Forest, you can add me, you can leave a message down here so that you know we can both add each other. Also, when I feel I'm bored, I've realized that using stationery, using colors, making studying fun help me a lot. Especially when I need to go through a very like boring subject and that happens. So next question is, do you have any tips on creating study logs? Also, which notebook brand do you use for your bullet journal? So I use a Leuchtturm 1917 A5 dog grid. I've been using this one since last year. This is my third bullet journal. I'm gonna leave a link with the description of this item in the description box below if you want to have more info about it. And for study logs, so right now there is a video on my channel which is about how I use my study log. I'm going to link it uh, right here. I, I actually plan on refilming that video because it's kind of short and it's got some audio problems. So for the moment, you can go uh, check that video out, but there is going to be a new updated version, better version of that video soon. Next question is, have you ever felt stressed while doing tracker? I started tracking productivity and quantity after watching your videos and sometimes I feel so stressed and guilty that the tracker is obviously showing that I'm not doing as good as I wanted. Of course, yes, that happens to me and I have a really good example. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I used to use a sleeping patterns uh, tracker and that was working really, really well for me Till the moment I realized that I was not using it anymore, so I just stopped using it. I mean, whenever a certain spread or a certain tracker doesn't work for you, you can just, you know, remove it from your, from your bullet journal. That's absolutely right. That's why I usually do a revision of the month at the end of the month so that I know what I need to set up on the following month. Some months I may have some specific spreads like the sleeping patterns for example or and some other months I may just not use them. So do change the way you organize your bullet journal as you go. If, you, if there are spreads that you don't use just skip them or you know include new spreads. So if you feel stressed about the tracker well, maybe it's not the right tracker. Maybe you're not tracking the right thing or maybe, you know, it's just not the right time for you to track things. You know, that happens as well. Let's say you have a really stressful life. You have a lot of things going on right now. You may want to have a, ve a very basic, simple uh, bullet journal and not, you know, a very complicated full of trackers uh, bullet journal sort of. Also, I have realized that it helps me a lot to write things down when I'm stressed. That's why I have created this spread. Uh, it's really easy. What I do is that I just write down when, whenever I feel negative. As you can see here, it says negativity sucks. And it's really easy. You just write down uh, what's going on, why you feel negative, why you feel stressed. And uh, you reread what you've just written. Most of the time you'll realize that there is a, a very easy solution or, you know, there is nothing you can do at the moment, so you'd better, you know, not focus on that. Do I have any useful study tips? I have a lot of study tips, but I think that that would make a different video. So I'm planning on doing some smaller videos about study tips. I'm, right now, I don't really have that much time because I have all of my exams coming up. So I'm working on a sort of a mini series about study tips and I'll let you know, you know, when I'll be done with my exams next week. Okay, now moving on to YouTube. Next question. 
I do bullet journal and my diary both in one notebook. I kind of feel it's a bit messed up and not organized, but also I don't want to transcend myself within several notebooks. So which organization do you recommend? This question resonates a lot with me because in my very first bullet journal, which is right here, I used to do the same. So let me show it to you. I'm a fan, I'm, I'm a fan of like, journaling. I've been bo I've been journaling like regular journaling for a long time, for several years. Like I don't know when I started, like 6 years ago or something. And um that's why my very first bullet journal used to look like this. Not sure if you can see it, but you know, I have a lot a lot of regular journaling. Regular journaling and some, you know, tasks in here. When I switched from this bullet journal to my next bullet journal, I realized that that was a problem. But still, I did not want to have two separate journals. Now, my advice is keep all of your tasks, all of the appointments, all of the stuff that you need to get done on the dailies. And there should be a separation between this part and the part where you do your journaling. So let me show it to you in my bullet journal. I've changed my daily a bit. And as you can see here, for example, now I have all of the tasks up here. I'm not sure if you can see it. All of the tasks up here and some journaling on this side. What I do so that it's absolutely clear is that I use a fine liner for, all, for drawing all of my tasks and a fountain pen for the journaling. This way I can like, I can have both in one page and it's not as confusing. Also, if sometimes if I feel like I want to do some journaling, I take some pages and just write down like a full page of journaling. How the fact of using two different inks makes it um, very clear to me that like everything that is in black, uh, that's all of the tasks, the stuff that I need to get done on the day, and the journaling is with a different ink. So that may work for you. Or, for example, you can have one page where you use the bullet journaling system with the bullets and your tasks, your appointments, and on the other page, you can do your journaling. But the most important thing is that you, you do have like a clear separation between the, the two things. You realize that you have to add a task, you really want to add them not after your journaling, but in the section that's for the tasks. Also, for example, you could have uh, a weekly spread where you keep track of all your tasks. You can have you can have a look at all of my different layouts in the video I filmed a couple of weeks ago, or you can have, for example, one page only for all the things that you need to get done on that week, and after that, your daily journaling. The most important thing is to have a clear separation between regular journaling and the bullets and the tasks and what you need to get done. Next question I have, can you do an updated study plan spread? Yes, are you gonna do are you gonna do resolution goals page for 2017 in your new bullet journal? And if so, any ideas for the type of layout you're gonna use? The answer is yes, I have already done that. This year I have decided to do a three month uh, action plan. So I have set some goals for the, third, the first three months of 2017 and some actions that I want to take in order to achieve those goals. I'm gonna give you a quick uh, sneak peek of the spread, but this is going to be part of the video that's coming up this Saturday about my January setup. So I have all of my goals on this page and all of the actions on this page. I really like the fact that I decided to focus only on, on, on the first three months so that this way I can see clearly like the actions that I can take because for example if you have like a very big goal for the year but that you can't really work on this right now that you know that that makes it harder for me to to take actions don't forget to go watch the video that's coming up this Saturday so the next question is how do you fit multiple events in one day in a calendar? So let's say you have a lot of you have a lot of appointments of stuff on one specific day. What you do is that you add a small box, you write in for example 78 
and 78th would be the page in your bullet journal. This way, you know that when you go to 78th, you're gonna have there the list of all the appointments and all the stuff that's coming up on that day. So Boho Berry, she filmed a very good video about the subject. So I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave the link in the description box below for all of you who want to have more details about the calendar system. Next question is about language learning. I've got a couple of questions related to language learning. People want to know how I track my language learning within my bullet journal. First of all, I'm studying Chinese Mandarin. I've been learning Chinese for quite a while. I've also spent one year in China a couple of years ago. So I'm still improving. I'm still learning. I wanted to uh, track that within my bullet journal. That's why I have created a specific spread for doing that. I have decided to call the spread Bujo Boost Your Vocab. The Bujo Boost Your Vocab page looks like this one. As you can see I track a different word every day. Every day I'm trying to learn a new Chinese word and uh, whenever I learn a new word I put it in the tracker right here. This way I can see which words I learned on the month of December and it's really really helpful when you want to review your words because you can either you know, cover like the characters and this way I can practice how to write the characters or I can I can cover the the definition so that I can practice the the meaning of the characters. As you can see towards the end of the month I wasn't that consistent because that's where Christmas was and New Year's Eve and all that stuff, but that's alright. Also I keep track of the words that I learn every day in my dailies. So let me show it to you for example in this week. I add a box uh, next to the header of the day and I draw in the character that I learned on that day. This way whenever I flip back to my bullet journal, I can review the character and also it makes it really, really pretty. Also, sometimes I would feel really, really motivated and I would create some specific spreads for um, improving my vocab. For example, as you can see here, I created in my last bullet journal this spread about uh, math in Chinese. I have all the characters and the definition and I used a lot of colors. I used my mind liners and I'm so in love with this page and it helps me uh, learn the material much, much uh, easier. So next question is, could you please show us uh, how you study and your notebooks, especially Chinese? I'm curious how you arrange uh, your notebook. As I've said, I'm planning to do a mini A series of smaller videos um, um, about studying so that I can give you some study tips. Uh, but today I'm going to show you the notebooks that I use for my Chinese. First of all, I have um, my the standard course. I am using the HSK uh, level 6. I'll hopefully be taking uh, the level 6 this year. Hopefully, because university is being really crazy, I have so much stuff to study, guys, and uh, engineering is hard. But you know, I love Chinese, so I really want to focus more on my Chinese this year. I use two small notebooks. I have this one, this very small notebook, which is the one I use for practicing my characters. Uh, I really like this one. I got a ton of those when I was in China this summer and they're really practical because you can take them uh, with you wherever you are and you, you can, you know, write down when you have time. You can see you have a part where you write the pinyin up here, then the character. This way you can practice a lot of characters at the same time. You can practice the pinyin and the characters. Also, I use this composition notebook for copying the course. As you can see here, I just rewrite uh, the lesson. I would either copy the lesson from the notebook so that I can practice all the characters or do this while listening. I would listen to the audio track and try to write the, the audio down. That's a very, very good um, exercise. I plan on doing a how to study Chinese video on all of the study tips that I have uh, for Chinese learning. Next question is, 
What is the bullet journaling system? How you use it and would you recommend it? When do you like it and what uh, can you use it for? Also, what are the markers and pens that you use? So for the markers and pens, I have filmed a what's in my pencil case video. You can find it in my channel. I'm going to leave the link in the description box down below. So go check that out. So bullet journaling is a productivity system that was first created by designer Ryder Carroll. He has a very, very good video about it. So you should definitely go check it out. I'm going to leave that video as well. So basically the bullet journaling system is a very easy mode to log things in a journal and uh, according to a specific system of bullets. So when you first start bullet journaling, it's very important to set a a system that's clear and that works for you. I have that in my very first page, in the key page. Basically what you do is that you want to have a small symbol for identifying a task, an appointment, or a note. And then uh, you use that to log things rapidly in your journal. If you want to have more information, go visit the website bulletjournal.com and go watch uh, the video that the creator of the system uploaded on YouTube. That's really, really helpful. So next question. I really love how structured and organized your notes look in general. How do you organize the page layout so it doesn't become messy, chaotic? So that's a very, very good question. And the answer is that at first, all of the spreads will be kind of messy and chaotic if you don't work on them. So when I first started bullet journaling, I didn't know how the system worked, but still I wanted to have some trackers. I, I wanted to um, have some different spreads and I would just write them down, not knowing where I was going. Right now, what I do is that I do a lot of designing before having um, my spread in the bullet journal. So I used to do all the designing in this journal. And uh, as you can see here, I draw like ideas down and I work on how I want to my spread to look like. I'd say that first of all, you should know what you want your spread to do for you. Then you may ask yourself if you want to have a spread in one page or two pages, or if you want to have a bigger spread in like multiple pages. Also, you may want to ask yourself if you want to have a lot of space to write things in or if you want to have a lot of information in a very small place. And I'd say that the most important thing is to get started. Go create your spread, see what works and what doesn't work and improve your system accordingly. Like I do change my spread almost every month. At the end of the month, I do a global review of what worked and what didn't work on that specific month. And I do change things if needed. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I answered all of the questions and I hope that this video won't be too long. And I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye.